So good morning and afternoon everyone and welcome to Connect, connecting people with art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor and I'm a part of customer success team at Tableau. So today we have a special guest. She's a Tableau Zen master and one of the core team member of the Makeover Monday project. Everyone, please welcome Eva More. So Eva is a head of business intelligence at Exasol and a Tableau Zen master. She's a leader in the data visualization community running the popular global social data project Makeover Monday together with Charlie and previously with the Tableau Zen master Andy. Eva is passionate about helping people understand, work with and fall in love with the data by giving them a platform for learning about data analysis and visualization for connecting with like-minded people. In her day job, Eva is responsible for engaging with the Tableau community, leads the Excel sports analytics projects, and drives the company philanthropic engagement. Outside the data world, Eva is keen in miniature, triathlete, recording every swim, ma mapping every bike ride, and analyzing run and loves traveling around the Europe and visiting other places across the globe. And the fun fact about Eva is that she prefer odd numbers over even ones. Eva, over to you. Thank you, Saga, and um, yeah, welcome everyone. I'm very excited to have people dialed in at this time in the morning, the afternoon, or the middle of the night, wherever you might be. And I'm going to share uh, the story of Makeover Monday and why you should participate. Uh, I think January is always a good time to start something new. And hopefully, if you have any other New Year's resolutions, uh, you're still going strong, and this is one you could add to the mix. Um, so let's get started. What is Makeover Monday, and who are the people leading it? This is literally what I look like. Uh, I do wear a different jacket right now, but that's essentially me. Uh, Eva Murray, I'm head of BI at Excel and the Tableau Zen Master, like Saga already mentioned. And then there's Charlie Hutchison, who as of 10 days ago is leading Makeover Monday with me. Um, he's also based in the UK. I'm in London, and he is uh, further southwest. Um, and previously, Andy Kriebel uh, led Makeover Monday with me for the last three years, and he actually started the whole thing. Um, what is Makeover Monday? Well, our mission is to improve how we visualize and analyze data one chart at a time. And when Andy initially started doing Makeover Monday, it was just his own practice. And I think he started in 2009, or his first proper makeover is from 2009. And he took a suggestion from Stephen Few saying, um, you know, looking at existing visualizations and charts and then creating makeovers to improve the things that he thought weren't so great. Uh, so Andy did this as a practice. And after a few years um, of doing that, Emily Kuhn, who's also part of the Tableau community, noticed that he did them every Monday. And she's like, why don't you call it Makeover Monday? So the hashtag was born. He did Makeover Monday. Um, and then in 2016, Andy Cotgreave, who is the technical evangelist at Tableau, he uh, joined him and they ran it because they said, you know, let's just see what happens if some people want to kind of play along. So they published the data sets and the blog post every week about their makeovers. And it became really, really popular. And um, so you know, it was this project for a year, and then Andy Cotgreed, getting busy with his book writing, said, you know, I'm out. <laughs> so Andy asked me to join him, and for the last three years, we have grown, developed, and shaped Makeover Monday into the project it is today. And I'm excited to see what Charlie will bring to the mix and how we're going to continue to shape it. Um, it's a global social data project. That's how I would describe it. We literally have hundreds of regular participants and thousands um, across the four years that it's been run as a project. It's a weekly challenge um, that is you know, about a new data set every week. And it's called Makeover Monday because that's kind of when it happens. But we do publish the data on Sunday because some people, unfortunately, cannot do this as part of their day job. And they have to do it in their spare time. So we want to give them the chance to do it on the weekend. We provide feedback and support for free, and you can use any tool you like. Now, the fact is that about 95% of participants do use Tableau, and I think that's a very uh, strong, I guess, statement about what this community is like. This Tableau community is all about sharing and supporting each other, teaching each other, learning from one another. And I think people in this community, when I look at at least the ones I'm connected to, they do this stuff in the evenings and on the weekends because they just enjoy it. I have not really come across someone saying, oh, yeah, I spend my evenings doing 
Power BI on MicroStrategy stuff. So I think that's why we see so much engagement from the Tableau community. But it is tool agnostic, so we welcome anyone. And for us, it's interesting to also see what people create with other tools, how easy it might be or how difficult and what the designs and features like. Um, and it's a great networking and learning opportunity for anyone who participates. Uh, looking at the numbers, so these are just the numbers from last year, <clears throat> from 2019. We had 53 data sets because we added the, the last week of the year into 2019, um, over 7,300 visualizations by over 1,700 individual participants. And now these numbers are self-reported. So we have a submissions process, and uh, that means that these are just the numbers from people who submitted. There will be plenty of people who forget to submit or just don't really care about submitting because they don't really want to be counted. They just want to participate. So the dark number is probably a bit higher um, than what we have right here. Um, how does Make of a Monday work? Let me share. It's a weekly cycle. So that's how we've uh, displayed it here. On a Sunday, we publish the data and the article. So it's always um, not just Visualize, so, so we start with a visualization, yeah? You have a bad visualization, and I can show you some, some examples um, in a bit. You have a bad visualization, and then what questionable or whatever we want to describe it as, and we're like, hey, let's use this as a makeover. We could, should create something better. So we get the data for this visualization, and then we ask people to create a makeover. So we publish the data set, and we publish the article, because typically it's embedded in some sort of news article. and um, we push all of that onto data.world as a platform for hosting the data sets. Data.world, you can download the data as an Excel file, or you can use a, third, uh, sorry, a um, web data connector for Tableau. And um, so that all comes out on a Sunday, usually around midday UK time. And then Monday and Tuesday, we see most people in, you know, getting um, involved, analyzing their data, publishing their visualizations. On a Wednesday, we run our feedback webinar on the Bright Talk platform. There's a special hashtag, and I do want to call out that this hashtag is only for the webinar. If you want general feedback, please don't use the hashtag. Um, but we have this, this hashtag so people can say, I want webinar feedback. And the way that works is that during the webinar, we go through the visualizations that or the submissions on Twitter that have this hashtag, and we give people feedback on their visits. And um, typically, I do you know a few kind of live demos during that as well, um, downloading people's visualizations and actually putting the changes in place that I'm telling them or I'm suggesting them to do. So Charlie and I run these on a Wednesday at 4 p.m. UK time, um, which is not the best time for Asia Pacific but they are all recorded and you can watch them on demand. Then we ask and hope that people implement our feedback in some way. Now you don't have to agree with everything we say, but hopefully the feedback that we give you on your visualization and the feedback you, you see and hear us give people on their visualizations helps you to make some changes to what you've created because the whole idea of Mikko One Day is to improve and learn and continue to grow your skills. So, um, that's why we like seeing our feedback in some way um, being used. And then on Friday, we publish a blog with the weekly favorites. And then on Saturday, the stuff you don't see is all the stuff we do behind the scenes to prepare for the next week um, and to drive all sorts of other activities. One of them I'm going to mention right now. Um, Saga has invited me to do literally a live makeover. That's going to happen in 10 days on the 20th of January is the Monday. Um, at 11 a.m. UK time, it's going to be all, you know, the registration will come out, but essentially I'm going to be joined by two um, people from the data school that Andy Krieber runs, and uh, the three of us are going to do live makeovers of that week's data set, and you can watch us viz, and the intention there is to show this is not meant to be a cumbersome chore that you do every week. It's meant to be a fun learning exercise that can be as short or as long as you want it to be. Okay, so why should you do this? You know, when, we, when you consider that, well, you're going to read an article, look at a verse, you're going to think about it, think about what's good about it, maybe what's bad about it, um, you're going to create your makeover, you're going to publish it, you get feedback, you make some changes, like this sounds like quite a lot of work, so why should you bother? And I think that's a fair enough question. Well, you can build your skills. Um, every week we provide you with a fresh data set. The data is all cleaned up for you. You literally don't have to do anything. Imagine 
Uh, so when I first started using Tableau six and a half years ago, there was no Mac over Monday, and there was only Superstore or the stuff you found for yourself on the net. Now there are 53 or 52 data sets for all the years we've done already, and then one new one every week for you to practice your visualization skills. You can um, try out different techniques and chart types because some charts work with certain types of data, and sometimes when we publish a data set, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm going to try a radial bar chart or whatever they want to ex experiment with, and the data just suits it really well. Um, and you can learn about visualization best practices. Uh, me, for example, I am the first to say I'm not a data artist. I'm not going to create amazing things like the Flerledge brothers and others. I'm like, I just, I just don't have the patience, but also I don't have the skill, and it's not really my focus. I want to create um, charts that communicate as quickly as possible, uh, that are quite accessible to everyone, and I'm not saying those aren't, but for me, the focus will always be on best practices. So you'll see from my side a lot of line charts and bar charts. And we focus on best practices because while we celebrate the really advanced skills and advanced visualizations some people create, we also want to make sure that it's really applicable for your day-to-day -day job. And I think, yes, there are some people who have the pleasure of creating maybe infographics or advanced visualizations for you know, public use on a website. Most of us have to do some sort of reporting. We have to find insights. So simple best practices, data visualizations are best, and this is what Tableau is so good at. So we want to make sure that's what you get out of it. Um, so that's what you can get out of it by participating regularly. You also get a chance to build your data this portfolio. And here are a couple of screenshots from the portfolios that Andy and I have got on Tableau Public. Um, hopefully, all of you, the people who've dialed in right now and those watching this on demand, already have a Tableau Public profile. If you don't, I strongly encourage you to get one um, because Tableau Public is where you can publish all these wonderful visualizations. Just a word of warning, it is Tableau Public, so everything is going to be published to, for everyone to see. Um, and even if you hide your visits, they can still be found, so please only use data that you have the permission to publish out there. Um, it's a chance that for you to show what you can do, um, what you're capable of, and also how your skills have evolved. And when I look at my Tableau Public Profile, the beginnings make me cringe, but at the time it seemed pretty cool. And I think that's the, that's the beauty of the learning process, that we get better over time and we realize maybe that wasn't such a good idea, or we also find our own little, or our own style and our own way of presenting things that is a bit of you know, our own signature. Um, we had several dozen people contact us over the years telling us make her one day help them find a new job because if you are particularly looking for a job as a consultant um, or a data viz artist or whatever uh, you are looking for and you can use this profile to show, well, this is what I'm capable of. Here is my style of design. Here are the types of analyses I do. Um, this is the kind of stuff I do it's so much easier than having to convince someone just by telling them about it. So use this for your advantage. Um, you can learn and get inspired because every week for that same data set that we publish, you get dozens and sometimes even hundreds of different visualizations. And even two people doing a bar chart, they will look different. So um, I would suggest that this is, so, so I, when I actually do presentations to the public about any kind of topic and I need good visualization examples, I always go to the Makeover Monday gallery and I will show you all of this on the website in a little while um, to just show them some really interesting ways of visualizing data. From everyone else, you also then learn tips and tricks. And the beauty of Tableau Public is that most people have their uh, visualizations available for download. So if you see something that you're like, wow, I wonder how I could do this, um, Download it, take it apart, figure it out, and learn from that. It's a great chance to connect with others and grow your network because you are surrounded by like-minded people um, who are more than willing to help, who are all you know, challenging themselves with the same data set each week. So you get the support and you get connections. And what we find is that at the live events, it's almost like a family gathering because suddenly people who've only known each other virtually before um, can now actually meet in person and you know connect and talk and all of that. So that is a 
one great advantage of that. You also get a chance to give back. So if you're more experienced with Tableau or data visualization in general, um, this is a great way to help others through giving them feedback or telling them how to do something. And then lastly, you can make an impact and you can help us to help those who need it most because we work with social impact organizations, we work with nonprofits who need a bit of extra help, who want to crowdsource visualizations and ideas and uh, that is something great to get involved with. For example, um, in a couple of weeks I'm going to be in San Francisco for a live Makeover Monday uh, session at the tablet. Well, not just for that, but it's going to be part of it, um, at the San Francisco Tableau User Group, and we're going to work with Bridges for Prosperity. I'm also organizing something with the Bridge Heart Foundation, and so on and so on. Uh, in March, we're going to start a year-long initiative with Visualized Gender Equality, um, heavily organized by the team at Operation Fistula. So uh, that's going to be all around gender equality uh, topics in once a month that is going to be on the agenda for Make Over Monday. So um, this is, you know, for people who really like the idea of, you know, this for social good um, and having an impact with their work that goes beyond their own learning, uh, Make Over Monday wants to be a platform for that as well. And before I get to the next section, I just wanted to uh, remind people, if you do have questions, yes, we have time at the end for Q&A, but p please feel free to send them throughout. I have my Q&A window displayed on another screen so I can address them as they come. Um, so yeah, just send questions as you have them. So what do we give you in return for your participation or to encourage you to participate? Well, we have actually written a book. And the reason why I'm putting this up first is because this book includes the lessons learned from a jam-packed 2017 where we started Make a Monday together in DNI. And all the lessons learned that we found, analyses, best practices, visualization types, what to use, what not to use, we've put all of that in a book so that it's all easy to uh, digest and easy to access in one place. Um, and this is available for the community to use. We also have the Vis Review webinar that I mentioned earlier. So on our website, I will share this um, in a minute. Uh, we have all the webinars listed that are coming up, and this is a great way to get feedback. We have a number of people who join these webinars every week, who seek feedback and who iterate, and we just, for us, it's such joy to see them go from wherever they started to developing their skills, growing their skills, and really um, getting so much better. And it's very obvious to us because we see their stuff every week. Um, and for us, it's the only way to give reasonable feedback because as much as we would love to comment on every tweet, it's impossible. Um, both Charlie and I do this project in our spare time. Uh, so there is only so many hours in the day and Twitter is very efficient for having any sort of meaningful conversation. So our comments there are quite you know, short and to the point, uh, but this review I think is the much nicer way to give feedback because you hear our voice, we can point things out, we can literally show you on the screen what we mean, um, you see it, everyone follows along, and it's um, definitely one of the highlights for me of the week. And then favorites. So we select and showcase the, the visualizations from the week that we think kind of best represent the data and the approach, um, and we'd want to balance that. So yes, we want to have best practices, but we also want to make sure that if there's a really compelling way that someone told a story, even if it isn't necessarily visualization best practices, we still highlight those, and then also great analysis. So people who find really interesting little nuggets of information um, are showcased as well. Um, how do you actually participate? <clears throat> so there's a few simple steps. It's, it is, I promise, it is pretty simple. And um, here we go. So you get the data on a Sunday, you read the article, please, because I think that always provides really interesting context for how the original author um, intended this viz to be consumed. And then you publish your visualization and you share it on Twitter with the hashtag Makeover Monday. And what I want to ask is that people please include a picture, not just a link to Tableau Public, but also a picture, a static picture on the tweet, because it makes our lives a million times easier, um, and anything that makes our lives easier uh, makes the project better because it means we can engage better. But also, you will get more engagement on your tweets when there's a picture. Um, on 
um, certain applications or in certain tools, links don't get displayed as a preview. So people just see the link. And I will be honest, I never click on the links because I don't have the time to click on 150 vis like, uh, visualization links every week. So for me, the picture is like the first impression. And then I choose to comment or not, or I you know, then defer it on to this review. Um, if you want feedback from the community, by all means, you know, write in your tweet that you are open to feedback. Um, and if you want to get comment, uh, comments in the webinar, then also include the hashtag MMVizReview. Join the VizReview webinar to learn, so you can do that live or on demand. And iterate and then share again. And at the end of your process, before the week is over, uh, submit. So we have an official submit page, and I will show all of that shortly. Um, where do you participate? There are a few important places. So the data is published on makeupmonday.co.uk slash data. Uh, you submit slash submit webinars slash webinars. Actually, let me show you the website right now. Um, so we'll go to makeupmonday.co.uk. So on the first page, you see the book. And when you scroll down, you see this kind of circular process, but also, again, you see how this um, how the process works and the different steps. And I ask people to please follow the process because it's there for a reason because it makes it possible for us to manage this this project and run it effectively. At the very top, under participate, you can find the data sets. And for this year, we only have one, but for 2019, we have um, you know. The 53 data sets for Latvia. So you can go through all the past years. There's a link to data.world, there's a link to the article and the data source. When you submit your, uh, or when you're ready to submit, we ask you to fill in this Google form, which then feeds a dashboard. So you put in your, your details, which year, your name, your Twitter handle, uh, the week that you submitted to, um, a link to Tableau Public if you've used Tableau Public and a link to the image. And you can take this one just from Twitter. Like if you've tweeted out your picture, right click on it, say copy image address and put that in there. Uh, what else do we have? And then you will be part of the submissions tracker. Now this was from 2019 um, and we, um, we have collected, so we've got 23 people in the 100% club. They, com they completed every week's Makeup Monday. You don't need to complete it in that week, so there's no deadline. You can do them all in the last week of the year if you choose. You just need to hit the go into the submissions form. That's the submissions form feeds this dashboard, um, and then we have a gallery, and the gallery shows the favorites. Um, uh, it shows the favorites from the the week, and because it's full of pictures, it's going to take a little while to load. But I recommend you check it out when you get a chance. Um, on the blog, under Learn, you will find the weekly favorites. So every week, we publish the favorites. And you can see them there. And you find the links to that week's data set and webinar, et cetera. Uh, we also publish our makeovers. And then the other important one is webinars. And when you go to webinars below, you see what's coming up. So another one happening today is in uh, at 4 p.m. UK time. Um, you can hit attend, you will automatically be registered. And then when you click, so recorded are all the previous, so we have 156 recorded webinars and then 13 upcoming ones. I've scheduled all the Viz reviews for this quarter and some additional webinars. So the year of Makeup Monday with Michelle, with Kate and with Mira are coming up as well. And um, what we require for people to get feedback in our Viz review webinar is to actually register ahead of time because that tells me, so I go through all the registrations and compare them to the tweets, because if people aren't registered, I can't with confidence say that they're gonna watch the webinar. Um, so that's our kind of sense checking mechanism. So I ask people to just literally click on it, register ahead of time and you're fine. So you see all of that stuff there. Um, we have workshops we provide, you can meet us at events and there's a shop for swag. So let's get back to our presentation. Hopefully that was helpful. I would just recommend check out the website. Uh, Charlie and I can be found on Twitter. Uh, my hashtag is, uh, my, my Twitter handle is trymydata, Charlie's is Charlie H. Tableau, and these are our blogs. Okay, so the Makeup Monday page we've just looked at. And, oh, that seems, that seems to be the last slide, um, funnily enough. I guess my intention was to show the website afterwards. 
Um, but let me also show you on Twitter. If we just look at the Make of a Monday hashtag. Um, so we have kind of dominated the hashtag now with uh, our data viz um, tweets. So if we look at the latest, you will find a bunch of, well, this one is not data, but <laughs> the other ones are about data. So you can see what other people are doing. And um, yeah, it's just a, you know, a fun exercise. And obviously try and participate in the conversation as well if you want and um, ask people for help or suggest some you know, feedback for others. So with that, I'm at the end of my slides and happy to take any questions. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Eva, for that. So now we have our, so you can go ahead and ask questions from Eva. You can use the Q&A or you can use the chat function and she will be happy to answer it for you. So I think, Eva, I have a question for you. So what you will recommend someone who is just starting their journey with Tableau? So what should what should be your three guidelines for them? Uh, do you mean in terms of creating visualizations or just in general what to do? I, I will say both, just to in general do and maybe going in the path of data visualization also. Yeah, I guess so when I started, there were user groups, but there weren't really, I mean, I wasn't even on Twitter when I started using Tableau, um, but there also, I don't think there were that many community initiatives. So they are now all there, and I would say use them. There's Make of a Monday is a very beginner-friendly project because it, you know, it's, it's literally just about create a makeover in whatever way you see fit. It doesn't require um, any deep technical knowledge of Tableau. If you can create a bar chart, you create a bar chart. You know, that's fine. Um, and then there are other projects if you're at the point where you want to actually build your, your technical skills and you want to challenge yourself more, there's uh, Workout Wednesday, which is all about you see a picture of a visualization, you see a list of requirements, and then you have to rebuild it without, you know, without cheating. So basically, you will rebuild based on these requirements. Um, you build the same phase, and that's really to challenge you on the technical side and with calculations and all of that. Um, and then there are other projects that are maybe more um, topic based. So there is um, Project Health Viz, which is about healthcare. Um, there are the Sports of the Sunday, which is all about sports data. Um, there's Iron Quest, which is all about getting ready for Iron Viz feeders. So these projects are a great way to get involved because also you see what everyone else is doing. You don't have to start from zero. Um, and then in terms of actually creating a visualization for Makeover Monday, maybe I'll, um, I'll show a quick example. Um, so if we go to data.world slash Makeover Monday, you see the data sets and the original visualizations all posted there. So let's pick um, maybe a, a very simple one. Estimated Christmas spending. So this was from week 52. And um, the visualization of this table. So this is the original, and then we suggested, you know, the makeover. Um, and so if I just look at my um, my blog for 52, I literally just did a bar chart and a slope chart. So this is the vis I created. It's a bit bigger, further down. So it's a bar chart and a slope chart. Nothing more complex than that. The rest is just formatting. It's just about you know a few text boxes and lines and where to put stuff. Um, but that's essentially it. So you have the original, and there is, I would say, um, something to keep in mind is that there is no requirement to use all of the data, every single field, every single year. Like if you find something interesting, just pick that one thing and focus on that. I would. My preference is always that someone focuses on creating an effective visualization and story about something small rather than creating a dashboard that tells me nothing but has lots and lots of charts. Um, so in terms of the process, I would say just start. Don't worry too much about it. But if you are maybe a bit more experienced with Tableau or you've, you, you want to get it right, um, then I would suggest to focus on small things like, you know, spelling. Do you have enough space? Do you have a, a clear title? You know, does, does something pop out? Um, when you 
are done with your viz and you take a couple of, literally, you walk a couple of steps back from your screen, what's the impression you get? Do you immediately understand, oh, this is what it's about? Or do you need to sit down and read through everything? Because the nature of things is that people have very short attention spans these days. And especially on social media, um, there's, you know, like people see it briefly on Twitter to get people interested it needs to be either visually amazing uh, which most of us you know kind of struggle with because we're not all graphic designers or you have something that is so clear and impactful that you're like oh wow that is a really good way to show this data um so <clears throat> so there's that so you know creative is i would say don't worry about all the details at first just kind of get started and be willing be willing to take feedback on board. I have to say, I think people are brave when they join the webinar and ask for feedback there because you know it can be quite daunting when someone critiques your work. But keep in mind that it's never personal. It's not about you. It's literally just us looking at your work and suggesting ways that you can make it better. So I would also say step two, to ask for feedback and then put that into practice in some way. So if we tell you, okay, maybe the colors aren't the best choice, whatever reason, you know, maybe the contrast isn't good or it's red and green and people with color blindness will struggle to see it, then it can be as simple as some cosmetic changes, change different colors and you're fine. Um, and then lastly, I would say being consistent. I think people who practice regularly get the most benefit out of it. And if you don't have time every week, that's fine. Maybe it's every month for you or every two weeks. Um, but I would say a consistent schedule and that's why we suggest to people, keep it simple you are not expected to spend five hours of this every week. It's, this is not IronViz or some sort of awards um, process. Like, this is just a weekly hobby for most people. Um, and it shouldn't impact your personal life or your work life. It should be a fun exercise. So set yourself some time aside every week and practice and you will see great benefits. Perfect. I think Mira has a question for you and she's asking, how do you manage your time between running this project and your day job? Um, thank you, Mira. I think um, without patting myself on the back too much, but I'm extremely good at being organized and managing my time in general. And um, I'm, I guess I don't sit still much and I probably should do more of that, but I'm quite well prepared and maybe going to the Girl Scouts when I was a little child helps, <laughs> you know, but I, I just prepare things well in advance and I know what my day looks like. In the evening, I check you know, what meetings do I have the next day? Like, what does my day look like? When do I fit things in? But also, I think people maybe overestimate how much I do for Maker One Day. Like, yes, of course, I'm kind of constantly present, but sometimes it's as simple as, okay, I've got a couple of tweets to rep respond to or a couple of messages to send, but I can do that when I'm, I don't know, walking to and from somewhere. Why well, do that while I have a bit of downtime? Maybe I've just grabbed a cup of coffee or something. I sit down. I, uh, I write a quick tweet before I get back into my normal work stuff. Um, I do, so while I do Make of a Monday in my spare time, of course, some of that overlaps with work time, but then also sometimes work time overlaps with my spare time. So um, I think as long as the balance works for me and I still get everything done, I'm fine. Um, but also I've killed things or, or removed things from my life that waste a lot of time. So I do not, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. Um, I do not have a TV and I also tend to not really watch things on YouTube like I, I watch things I want to watch like I want to do yoga, I'm gonna watch a yoga video and follow along but I don't really browse and sometimes you have these like YouTube sessions where you watch something and you're like hours later you emerge and you say what the hell just happened um, but I try not to get into that and to fill my time with the things that make me feel good and that and it's not just about learning and being productive but just things I enjoy and that could be reading or just staring out the window but I try to be very deliberate about how I use my time that's a long answer <laughs> perfect and and I think someone has a question about it like does the scope of data I can use R or Python language in that? Like what you would recommend on that thing? I mean, people people can use whatever they want. Um, we we are a data visualization project. So if someone wants to learn how to write code, I mean, if the code creates a visualization, I guess, then Maker One Day can be helpful for you. But if you want feedback on your code, um, I'm the wrong person to give that to you because I do not 
uh, no R or Python. Um, but by all means, we have people who do stuff in R. We have people to who do stuff oh in D three. So so there are people using other tools. And if you so if I guess just try it out. And if you see benefit in it, by all means, stick to it. Right. And I think I have one more question. If I, as a user, is basically going ahead and downloading someone's civilization from Tableau Public and using it for Makeover Monday for the review, what are the things I should keep in mind when I am doing such activity? So I'm, I'm not sure I understood your question correctly. So is this person A downloading person B's list? That, that's right, yeah. OK, so I, one thing that neither Charlie nor I will tolerate is uh, plagiarism. And but that is, and by plagiarism I mean someone downloading someone else's visualization and pretending it's their own. And there have been instances, so this is not necessarily make of one day, but in general, where people have downloaded other people's work and have uploaded to their own profile, stuck their own name on it, and we have people seen promote their own skills, promote their work, earn money by promoting other people's work as their own. And that is not acceptable, and that is not something I am in any way interested in having in Makeup Monday. It's also not something I can really avoid because <clears throat> I don't have the time or the ability to police everyone. But in general, I, I know that most people have good intentions. So from that, my recommendation is, if you see someone's work and you're like, this is amazing, I want to save this for all eternity, my first recommendation is to use the bookmarking feature in your browser because that has been around since the 90s like you can just bookmark it in your browser and you will be fine on Tableau public it's also and let me show you this because it might not be so obvious to people so if you go to public.tableau.com and you have registered for for something so if I go to my activity feed this is other people's work that I'm following I can actually so if I say Jeff favorite okay say fonts maybe Okay, maybe website activity. Maybe this is a dashboard I want to uh, uh, remember. I can bookmark it by favoriting it with a little star button. Oh, I thought this would work. Okay, maybe I just have to click on the on the dashboard first um, or on the link. So this is now Anne Jackson's dashboard. I really like it. I'm going to favorite it. And this saves it in my favorites. So um, I don't know where I find these now, but <laughs> here we go. Activity, favorite it. And um, oh, these are other people's. Oh, I'm lost now. Saga, where do I find these favorites? Maybe under my profile. Yes. Because I I only really publish. Ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah. I thought so. So these are all the things I favorited. So now I have this gallery without stealing anyone else's work. Now the second option, if you say if I say oh, Anne's website activity um, dashboard is really really cool, and I want to know how she built it because I want to build something like this for myself, my customer, my hobby, I can, uh, she has already made it not downloadable because, you know, she actually has a business doing this kind of stuff. But if you were to download it, you can download it and you can have it, you know, on your desktop. Now, using it to learn is perfectly acceptable. What is not acceptable is to then remove Anne's details and upload it and pretend it's my own. Um, and the reason why we're calling this out is just because it does happen from time to time, and it's just not really nice to find your own work copied by someone who takes advantage of it. So um, please, if you find someone else's work, great. Like, find a way to save it for yourself, um, but not to put it on your profile and then for everyone to think this is what you created um, and all of that. So that's what I would suggest. And I think there's, there's one more question. When using Makeover Monday, it's good to see finished visualizations, but would there be a step-by-step -step processes in how to create something similar if we were wanting to recreate a way of using a visualization for our own work? So yes and no. Um, I guess in the book, we describe kind of best practice visualizations and what to use for what purposes and how to go about creating visualizations in general. But our book is not about Tableau. Our book is about data based best practices. And also because Maker Monday is not about Tableau, if we create step-by-step -step instructions, we would have to create them in all sorts of different tools so everyone can recreate everything. Um, but I would recommend that if you like a certain this, to just reach out to the author and say, hey, did you, did you have a blog about how to build this? Um, because a lot of people actually do. Um, 
one person, for example, I'm trying to think of now, I, I can't think of someone off the top of my head, but the, there are plenty of authors out there who actually, well, the Flerlich, but it's Ken Flerlich. Uh, let's see if we can find him. So if like him just as an example, he will, so he's got a, a tutorial about wind roses by the looks of it. So he explains exactly how to build stuff step by step with screenshots and then you can rebuild it. Um, so that would be my recommendation. If someone has built something really cool and you'd want to know how, they've typically already posted the blog post, but if they haven't, just reach out to them and say, hey, did you by any chance write a blog about this? Like, how can I learn how to do this? Perfect. And I think, uh, can you talk about like the data uh, sources over here? Like what exactly is your planning and intention when you go ahead and select a particular a data to go ahead and basically it can be used for the makeover Monday. Like, there is yeah. any thought process about it? So basically, and sorry, I keep switching <laughs> in and out, um, but let's go back to our data.world page with makeover Monday. So in the library, you see all the different data sets that we've got on here. And typically Andy and I in the past have started with, oh, we found a great picture of a terrible visualization. And if you go to Google and just look for dashboard or something, you find lots of bad examples. Um, and, and then we find the data to support it. So we typically don't start from the data, but sometimes I actually think, oh, you know, this would be, this would be a great data set. Can I find a visualization or can I create a bad visualization that we can use so that I can use that data set? Um, but let's look at week 50. This was amazing this is a terrible visualization. Like, yes, it might look cool or it might look engaging, but terrible from the point of best practices. <laughs> what is this actually telling me? And it's so messy and so colorful. And actually, because it's trying to be something, it's trying to be a picture, but also it's trying to be an informative visualization. It kind of fails to be both. Like it's, it's not nice on, on either side, at least in my view. So for, for this one, what we did was we, we saw the picture and then, so, you know, we go to, well, we find the picture somewhere um, in an article. And in this article, it actually, um, where did it have it? It had, it had a link somewhere to the data. And it always has to be publicly available data because, you know, we're going to make this all public. So we typically go based on the stuff that's already out there. Um, if we weren't, to, you know, if we weren't able to find the data, we could literally just type this stuff into Excel, just, you know, the stuff that's written on this cup. So this is our approach generally, that it's always publicly available data. And then in the data set itself, um, a bit further down, you can see the data itself. You can download it, or you can connect to a third party app. And in there, there's Tableau, there's also, um, Think. There we go. So there's there's other options as well. There are others, but yeah, you can use Tableau as a third-party tool and connect to it directly. I typically download the Excel and connect that to Tableau. I just find that that's more reliable. Um, but that's essentially how we go about with the data. And sometimes there's small data sets like this one um, was pretty simple. You know, we have four columns and about what 30 rows. But sometimes we have millions of records. It just depends what we find. And um, next week's data set that I've chosen is going to be a bit more in detail. Perfect. And Eva, I think there was one more thing. If basically someone wants to start their own Makeover Monday in a company, what would be your <laughs> feedback for them for that? Uh, funnily enough, I've just started writing a book about that process. So okay. um, I'm writing a book about how to build um, analytics community is internally in organizations and why it's a good idea. Uh, but this is going to come out for a few months, so I'll just tell you the short version. And the short version is you kind of just have to start. And what I would suggest is to first participate for a few weeks. Um, also, just take note of all the stuff we have on our website um, in terms of the resources, the, pr the structure, the process. Maybe if you can attend a Make of Monday Live webinar, is, uh, well, yeah, the webinar, but also Make of Monday Live event. Um, we have done some of them in the framework of a Tableau user group or just ad hoc live events like outside of user groups, but also some other people run, uh, you know, and, and we don't always know about it. So I wouldn't 
be able to recommend all of them, but you could um, you could attend those events just to see, okay, what are some different ways to do this? Because in our project, typically people do this by themselves from home and we all engage digitally, virtually, or via Twitter. But if you want to do it in your organization, ideally you bring people together in person so that they can learn from one another. And um, there will be people hopefully featured in my book um, that share their story. But there are some examples are that people have literally set up on a Monday, a Maker a Monday get together. And maybe it's you know a big meeting room and everyone who uses Tableau uh, comes together from two o'clock to three o'clock in the afternoon. And for a week, for a week, for a, an hour each week, they just visualize the data set that they have um, received from us through Maker a Monday as practice. Or alternatively, they might pick a visualization internally and be like, okay, this needs a makeover because it's not great. Let's all do brainstorming and let's figure out how we can make this visualization better. So those are some suggestions. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's easy to get started because you literally could just say, instead of everyone particip participating individually, we all sit in a room and we all do it together. That would be the easiest way to start. And then you just see where it goes. And some people might actually pick up and say, hey, I want to be involved. I want to lead this. And then you've got some internal champions that drive it and help it grow. That's right. Thank you. And Eva, any closing comments? I think you said about it. You have to keep it simple. You have to welcome the feedback. But anything else you want to talk to the community about it? Um, oh, gosh. I think si simplicity is good. Um, also being mindful of I guess, just the overall design. So if in doubt, remove color, remove any pictures, like literally as simple as possible, because you can always add more complexity. But if you start with something that is extremely busy with colors and logos, like the, you know, like this fast food viz we just saw, it's too hard to understand. So I would say, if you if you have any doubt about, oh, is that too much color? It probably is too much color. So um, focusing on that simplicity and also having a clear message. And I think so when we look at, um, if I can just very briefly share a, a blog post. So. This is the last one that Andy published. Oh, maybe this is sorry. This is not the best, uh, the best one because there wasn't really. Um, yeah. Okay. So Christmas spending, having a verse that says, "Will the Brits travel more this Christmas?" It's like there's a very clear question, um, and then there's some analysis that goes into it and some sort of outcome, uh, rather than having a, a title that is maybe clever or funny but doesn't tell me anything and also doesn't really tie back to the viz. So I would, I, I think titles have a lot of power or, or headlines um, and to use that wisely would be another recommendation. Perfect. Thanks a lot. I think we, if someone has any other question, you can just ask, you can take just one last question. Mm -hmm. How to use makeover dashboards for practice. I, I think that's actually what I spoke about for the last 45 minutes. So um, <laughs> right, I, yeah. <laughs> I hope that's fine. And then oh, some person said they have a question. Okay, so I'll give them a minute to type it out. Um, let's see. And um, and I do appreciate it. I think there's there's quite a few people from India and, and Asia Pacific dialed in. So uh, thanks for, you know, staying maybe a bit later in the afternoon on your on your Friday. I appreciate that. Um, makes it easier for me with the time here. So let's see if this question comes through. Okay. Uh, let me just ask the. <laughs> so, yeah. We still have time for questions. Any resources ever you want to share that like you personally follow, like for icons or maybe? So I, I don't really use icons or images okay. because uh, simply because I, I know there. Are, well, the main thing would be please only use icons or images that you're allowed to use because um, that you know a lot of stuff is protected by copyright. Um, but in general, I don't use them because whenever I try, it looks really clunky. Um, and okay, let me let me entertain you while this person asks their question with um, 
one of my first visualizations because I tried the icon thing and it just looks a bit terrible. Um, so let me show you because when you scroll all the way down, you see all the bad stuff. Um, but the main reason why I don't use it is just because I don't have the design skills or the knowledge of how to really lay things out nicely to make the icons in the picture all blend into one thing. Um, if you, okay, let me, there's a few visits on here, so I just need to scroll down. And I think at some point I kind of mixed, mixed them up a bit and they are a bit all over the place. Um, okay, we're getting there. It's getting older and older. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so this was one of my first makeover Monday visits in 2016, and it just looks really clunky. Um, in German, we have a saying: "It's like it looks like I tried and failed." So <laughs> this is not great, but uh, if you if you know what to do, um, obviously go right ahead. And then this person, Pablo Gomez, he is someone who knows what he does because he's a graphic designer, and he has great visualizations that use pictures and and all sorts. So let's look at that one or that one. Um, and he does it really well. So the reason I don't is because I don't really know the whole layout rules and everything. This is okay. So Antarctic versus Arctic. So he's got some cool stuff there, but also Game of Thrones. I mean, he's got all these little things there, and it just it looks so good. But I can't yeah. do that, so I don't even try. <laughs> um, yeah. So just as a as a bit of a recommendation on the icons question. Now I don't know if we if we ended up getting the question from the person who wanted to ask a question. Uh, no, I think, but we have a question on Tableau Public. I will just say it. So if you're using Tableau Public, please don't use your internal company data. So Tableau Public has to be a data which can be shared by anyone globally. So that is one thing you have to keep in mind. So never use your company data and publish on Tableau Public. Yeah. Yeah. And then I see one last question. How do I know which function to be used on Tableau while making a dashboard? Well, it depends what you want to do. Um, and I, I unfortunately have not um, acquired the ability yet to read minds. So I can Obviously, in the um, in the webinar, if I give someone feedback, I can tell them you use this to fix this. Like, that's quite easy. But if it's just about okay, how do I build this? Well, it depends what you want to do. Um, but you can always ask the community if there's something specific. Like if you say, I want to build a starburst or sunburst chart, there will be tutorials out there. But un unless you tell people what you're trying to do, it's hard to take, recommend any features. Um, is it important to learn all the features because some things we are masters, some we're not, how to go about it? Well, you just have to keep practicing. Um, I don't know all the features in Tableau because some of them I don't, I don't ever use because I don't really need them for the things I do. Um, this, this, you know, there's no exam at the end of Maker Monday. It's literally just a weekly practice. So I would just suggest to, uh, to join and, 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 you know, try it out. Um, and then there's a question, do you see a lot of collaboration between data science teams and BI teams because data scientists tend to complicate the solution communication and need some creative graphics to explain them all? Um, that I guess this is more of a general question. I think what I see is that data scientists or, or maybe also statisticians, they, they tend to know exactly how to analyze it and what the results mean, but they don't often have the training or the experience in visualizing and communicating effectively with data, whereas sometimes people in BI come from a non-data background. They might be from a communications background, so they know how to communicate, but they don't have all the analytical um, knowledge or experience. So I think collaboration would be great. And um, yeah, but that's, that's, I mean, we could talk for hours about that and um, we are running out of time. Perfect. I think the last question I will just take. So someone is asking. So the simple answer is that you have to buy more licenses. Yep. <laughs> oh, what's the question? I didn't. I didn't see. The, that. So the question is that out of hundred, only twenty people have Tableau access. The remaining don't have. Is there any suggestion to share my dashboard to my clients? Oh. Okay. I th I think one way is that you can go ahead and basically share the static image. 
yeah i'll just send me a mail we can talk about it but yeah. nevertheless thanks a lot eva i think it has been a great session thanks for your support for that and i think the feedback which i get when i talk to my customers from makeover monday i think everyone is improving their journey in data visualization so i think thanks to you thanks to andy and thanks to charlie for doing such an initiative and taking us forward towards getting it better at data visualization in steady tony it's my pleasure and i hope that most of the people on this webinar will at some point um attend uh, maybe join in to another webinar or uh, participate in Make Over Monday. So I'm looking forward to everyone's visualization. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks. Have a great yeah, have a great week. Weekend. Bye-bye. Take care.